Alright, so let's see how to use ER9X firmware for the FlySky i6X radio transmitter. So we'll take a look at the settings and how to set up a model along with how to bind a receiver and set the failsafe. So first let's take a look at the functions of each button. So using the up and the down button, I can navigate between the home screen. If I press the up button, I can see the stats. And similarly, if I hold the down button, we can see the stats again. If I hold the bind key and press the up button, I can enter the model list. And similarly, if I hold the bind button and press the down button, I can enter the radio setup. You can also hold the OK button to go to the model list or select model setup or go to the last menu or the radio setup and the statistics. So first we'll take a look at the radio setup. So I'll hold the OK button and select radio setup. So first in the radio setup, we have the display settings. So here you can adjust the contrast of the display. If you want, you can add a light switch. So basically you can control the backlight with a particular switch. So let's say if I want to control the backlight with switch A, then I can do that. But I'll disable that. Then you can adjust the backlight timing. Then flash on beep is if you want the radio display to flash on a particular alarm or timer. So if you want, you can enable that. So for example, I have a timer set on the throttle stick, which is set to 10 seconds. And if I throttle up and as the timer is about to end, you'll see that the display will start to flash and the radio will beep as well. As you can see, so if you want, you can use the flash on beep. The next is the audio haptic feature. So, so this is something that's in the ER9X firmware and I have a stock radio transmitter, which does not have an audio haptic mode, but you can control the settings like the beeper. So here you can change the duration of the beep. So if you want, you can disable it, keep it extra short, short or normal. Or if you want, you can keep it at long and extra long. I'll keep this to normal. If you want, you can change the sound of the speaker. I'll leave this to beeper. And if you want, you can change the pitch of the speaker and adjust the haptic strength if you have the haptic mode. And I've enabled the minute beep feature. So if I enable timer and a minute passes by, the radio will beep. Then we have alarms. So here you can set the battery warning alarm, which I've set to 4.5 volts. Then inactivity alarm. So if you leave the radio without any inputs for a certain amount of time, then the radio will beep. So I've selected five minutes. Then if you want, you can disable or enable the warnings. So throttle warning, switch warning, memory warning, and alarm warnings. And then we have general settings. So if you want, you can add your custom name that will be displayed when you turn on the radio transmitter. If you want, you can enable beep countdown. If you want to disable the splash screen, you can do that from here. And if you want, you can enable port scroll. So using the port, you can scroll through the settings and menu. And if you want, you can enable stick scroll. So with the right stick, I can navigate between the options. And if I want, I can enable or disable the options. So I'll disable that. The next we have controls. So the first we have is cross trim. So what that means is if you want to adjust the trim for the right stick, you can use the left trim button. And if you want to adjust the trim levels for the left stick, you can do that from the right trim buttons. So I won't be using that. If you want, you can reverse the throttle. And here you have the option to enable PPM simulator. And if you want, you can change the channel order followed by the mode and if you want you can name the sticks then we have the calibration screen so here you can calibrate your gimbals and ports now one thing to note is with ER9X on this radio transmitter the switch C which is a three position switch is assigned as a port 3 
So even though it acts like a three position switch, in the software it's assigned as a port three and that shouldn't make any difference as such. And to calibrate your sticks and ports, simply center your sticks and the ports and calibrate it. I've already calibrated mine, so I'll skip this. Then we have the trainer mode. So if you want, you can use this and connect another radio using the DSC port so that you can have a student teacher setup which is also termed as buddy box so if you want you can use that and here we can check what version of firmware we have currently it's at version 2.0 and it's by Mr. Cotello who is the developer for this firmware for this radio transmitter and here you can check all the switches so In the analog section you can check your gimbals and ports so if I move the switch see you can see at a7 the values are reflected and from here you can calibrate the battery voltage so press the ok button and press the up and the down button to adjust the values so use a voltage meter and connect it to the battery bay and check the voltage and then set that over here I've already done that And now let's take a look at the model setup. So I'll press the OK button and click on model select. I already have a model for my RC car. So I'll set up a new model. So let's edit this model. So if I press the OK button, I can either select edit, copy or move. And to delete a particular model, Make sure that it's not selected and hold the OK button and then select delete or any other option that you want. So first we have the mixer. So here you can set up all the channels. So let's say if I want to assign my FPV cord for model 2 I can do that. So I'll leave the channel order as it is because I use AETR. So usually for channel 5 I have the arming switch. So I'll edit the source and I'll select switch A. Now the ER9X firmware does not have the auto detect feature in which you could simply toggle a switch or the stick and that would be automatically set while making changes in the settings. So I'll have to set the source manually. Now one thing to notice in some of the settings the switches on this radio transmitter are labeled correctly but while editing in the mixer screen the switch label is carried from the ER9X firmware as it is. So the switch A is the switch throttle and because I want switch A for channel 5, I'll set this to switch throttle. Similarly for channel 6, I usually have the 3 position switch and like I said earlier with ER9X on this radio transmitter, the switch C which is a 3 position switch is assigned as a port 3. So I'll have to select P3 over here. And for channel 7, I can either use switch P or switch D. So once again, switch throttle is the switch A. Switch rudder is your switch B. So if I want, I can leave this to rudder and use the switch P. And switch elevator is switch D. And you can take a look at the correct order for the switches over here as well. So I'll set this to switch elevator so that way I can use switch D for channel 7. Then next we have heli setup so if you want you can use this. Here we have the limit or the output page in which you can adjust the sub trim. And to select the next option uh, you'll have to press the bind button and then press the up button or the down button to navigate to the next settings. So press the bind button and the up button so that the next setting is highlighted. So here I can set the end point and here I can invert the direction of the channel. So if I press the OK button I can invert it or leave it to normal. Then we have expo slash dual rate. 
if you want you can use this so for rado if i move the stick you can see the channel values so if you want to add a expo you can click on the ok button so that the values are blinking and then press the up button or the down button so if you want you can add a curve i'll leave this to zero and if you want you can add a switch to change between the expo values but i would suggest you use the curves option rather than making changes over here because whatever changes you make here will directly reflect to the sticks whereas if you make changes in the curves page you can assign it separately in the mixer screen then we have the modes so this is basically flight modes if you want you can use this if you are using an aircraft and here we have the curves page so if you want you can set up a curve and assign it to a certain channel so you can set up up to 16 curves then we have logical switches so if you want you can use this as well then we have the templates page so if you want you can create a simple four channel mix and various other options which i'm not sure of then we have safety switches followed by global variables and the voice settings if you have the voice modification and then the timer settings so if i want i can enable a trigger so that the timer one will be enabled whenever a certain switch or a channel is activated so i can set this to throttle or throttle percent and here i can adjust the countdown so if i want i can select count up or count down and to reset the timer you can add a switch and similarly you can set up another timer then we have the general settings so here you can name the model and to move to the next letter you'll have to hold the bind button and press the up or the down button and then click on ok to edit the letter now this is something that could have been fixed in the firmware so it would have been a lot easier to navigate to the next options using the up and the down button rather than trying to hold the bind button and then press the up and the down button so that's something which is a bit tedious if you want to extend the limits of the gimbals then you can do that from here by enabling the e-limits option then we have the throttle default which is set to end so this is the default for the throttle channel so i can change that to center or end if you want you can reverse the throttle and we have option for throttle trim and throttle expo slash dual rate and here we can adjust the trim type so you can select fine exponential fine or exponential medium and coarse i'll set that to fine and lastly we have the protocol settings so let's bind a receiver and see how to set it up so in the protocol settings oh, we can either set this to ppm or automatic frequency hopping digital system 2a which is the fly sky protocol and this is what we will most likely use and then we have the receiver setup so if i hold the ok button we can make changes to the receiver setup settings so we have ppm out then sub protocol we can only set this to ibus and sbus but although ppm and pwm also work because for my rc car i use pwm and the ESC only supports PWM and I've used it with that and if you want you can adjust the servo frequency followed by the frequency offset so for my FPV drone I'm using SBUS with the XXB receiver so I'll set this to SBUS and press the OK button to save and then we have the fail safe so currently it's not activated but we'll get back to this later and then we have the bind feature so if i hold the ok button we can bind a receiver from here so let's bind a receiver so i have my xxb receiver here and i'm using the sbus port and i'll hold the bind button and power on the flight controller so you can see the led on the receiver is blinking and I'll make sure that the bind option is selected and I'll press OK. And the receiver LED is stable. So the binding is successful. Alright, so to demonstrate the failsafe feature, I'll use my RC car. 
and I'll also show how to bind a receiver if you want to use PWM or PPM protocol. Firstly, in the radio transmitter, in the protocol settings, make sure you have selected the FlySky protocol and in the RX setup, make sure that PPM out is disabled. So if you enable PPM out and bind a receiver, you won't be able to control the channels. So make sure to disable PPM out and you can leave the sub protocol to SBUS and then go to bind and select OK. So that way the radio transmitter is in binding mode. And I'm using the FSI A10B receiver. So I'll plug in the binding adapter. So I'll power on the RC car. And straight away you can see that the binding is successful. So now let's take a look at the fail safe options. So under the protocol settings, where it says fail safe, select that and press the OK button. And the first option is either to activate or deactivate the fail safe. So currently I have the check mark on the activate option. So if I disable it and turn off the radio transmitter, So you can see that the steering is still in the left position even after turning off the radio transmitter. So that's because the failsafe has been deactivated in the radio transmitter. So make sure that you check mark the activate option so that way the failsafe can work. Then you also have the option to transmit to RX. Now transmit to RX is what I believe if your receiver has a failsafe button on it. And if you want to set custom failsafe, then rather than trying to press the button on the receiver, you can set the failsafe on the receiver from the radio transmitter itself. But that's just my assumption. And to set up custom failsafe, you can use the actual settings. So where it says use actual. So you can set a custom position for the stick and the channels. And then hold the OK button to set the channel values. So making sure that the use actual is highlighted, I'll set a custom stick position and I'll press and hold the OK button. So that way you can see the channel value for channel one, which is the rudder or the steering for the RC car is set to 100%. And if you want to individually set the custom failsafe for every channel, you can do that as well. So currently, for example, all the values are set to default. So if I turn off the radio transmitter, you can see that the servo or the steering servo is centered. And similarly, if I want the custom position for failsafe, I can do that as well. So now if I turn off the radio transmitter, you can see the steering is on the left hand side. So if you're using a fixed wing or an aircraft, then you can use the actual settings to set up custom failsafe. Now if you look closely in the protocol settings, on the very first line where it says first channel is set to number 1. If you want you can edit this to any other number like 2, 3, 4 or 5. And if you do that, then on the receiver, the third channel will be the first channel. And that way the first channel in the mixer page will actually be transmitted to the third channel on the receiver. So just keep that in mind that you don't accidentally change the number otherwise you could have problems. It's best to leave it to number one. And that's about it. That's all I have to share in this video. So this is how you can set up a model using the ER9X firmware on the FlySky i6X radio transmitter or even the FSI6. If you found this video helpful please make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel if you are new and if you have any other questions you can comment them below. So thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for more videos.